This voyage to the sun was top of the wish list of space exploration drawn up when NASA was created in the 1950s. Other missions to Mars, Saturn, even Pluto have been successful. Only the sun remains so unexplored, their final frontier. The vital importance of visiting the sun is highlighted back then by young scientist Dr. Eugene Parker. He discovers the solar wind, streams of electrically charged nuclear particles blasting out from the sun in all directions. Parker's mathematical theory shows that the wind envelops the Earth, a potentially fatal danger to astronauts outside of our planet's protective shield. Back in the 50s, Parker's ideas are so revolutionary, many disbelieve him. I remember how upset some people were. They insisted I made a mathematical error, and I would reply, well, here you are, here's five lines of algebra. You see I made a mistake, show me. The danger Parker discovered grows even greater when solar flares or other eruptions pump up the blast of deadly radiation. Astronauts landing on the moon were at risk, but they were exposed for just a few days. Now, manned missions to Mars are high on NASA's agenda. Even inside their spaceships, future Mars mariners run the risk of radiation poisoning. NASA realizes we must go to the sun. But for 50 years, they just can't do it. At first, the findings were, it's impossible, can't be done. We just don't have the technology. It would melt, we couldn't get there. Finally, uh, in the mid-2000s, all this technology came together and we figured out that we could actually build a solar probe and fly it. It's not surprising that reaching the sun is for so long considered mission impossible. We view our star with awe and reverence. To us, it's a solid presence in our sky. But in reality, there is no solid surface. Just plasma and countless beams of light bursting out from its nuclear core. Above is the sun's atmosphere, the corona, the shimmering cloud only seen as a ring around the sun when there's a total eclipse. Or in images like these, taken by NASA's specialized telescopes. Within that corona is a scientific mystery, which Parker Probe may help to explain. The corona's outer edges, furthest from the heat of the nuclear core, are hotter than the surface of the sun, which weirdly defies the known laws of physics. The visible surface that we're used to, that yellow ball, is about six, 7,000 degrees centigrade. But when you move away from the, the surface of the sun into the outer atmosphere, what we call the corona, it's actually millions of degrees. It's crazy. You can think about, if I step away from a campfire, it gets colder as I walk away, but the sun doesn't do that. Instead, when your campfire is the sun, step away from the heat and you get hotter than ever before. It is to solve that mystery and discover how the furnace heat of the sun powers dangerous rays towards us that the Parker probe must now reach its target. Nearing the heat of a star, Parker's survival depends now on one thing. It's five inch thick heat shield. The very first feature that jumps out at you is our heat shield. It is very critical for us. It is the thing that provides the shade and keeps the main body of the spacecraft cool. So it's highly important. 
This all-important heat shield is the product of 10 years' work by engineer Betsy Condon. Betsy is an absolute rock star, and for over a decade, she has devoted her entire life to making sure that our heat shield works. She lovingly calls it her eight-foot frisbee. At this approach, we're starting to get hot, and so the heat shield has to remain between the spacecraft and the shield at all times, so that the shield is protecting the spacecraft from the sun. It's basically a sun umbrella. In uh, true engineering terms, the heat shield is surprisingly simple. Behind the shield's reflective ceramic coating are layers of an engineered carbon composite. A shield so effective, it keeps the probe's all-important instruments at their normal working temperature. Our heat shield will experience temperatures of up to 1400 degrees Celsius. It provides such an effective shade that the main body of the spacecraft itself is at about 30 degrees centigrade, which is a lovely summer's day.